Rutgers University, big opportunities, a big stage, and Big Ten basketball. This week, there was no shortage of excitement at the rack where the Scarlet Knights played host to two different top-ranked teams. For Coach Steve Peichel's squad, a sellout crowd was on hand to watch the men battle the third-ranked team in the country. And, the foul. and for Coach C. Vivian Stringer and her women's squad, an upset loomed large against the 13th-ranked Michigan Wolverines. Junior guard Corey Sanders of Lakeland, Florida, had a season-high 31 points against the Boilermakers. This week, we spend some time with this multi-talented player and his teammates and watch Corey shine on Rutgers' big stage. Corey Sanders provides the highlight of the night. Plus, we get to know another Florida native, senior Jaslyn Rollins. Sold out crowds, ranked opponents in the rack, and upsets in the air. It's all coming up on the Rutgers Basketball Story. I guess when I was two, um, I started like falling in love with basketball. It was one time that I rode my uh, tricycle down to the park, and like my people was um, in the shower, and my grandma was doing homework. I just snuck out, rode to the park, and started playing basketball, and then they found me there. I got like one of the worst women's in my life, but I guess that's when they knew I was gonna play basketball. Sanders got it. You know, the rack is starting to come alive. You know, people see the brand of basketball that we're playing. It's an exciting brand, and uh, I think they're buying into it like we are too. So. Um, just to have the fans come out and give them something to watch and enjoy, you know, it's just been joyful for me. Um, you know, the rack can get loud at sometimes. When it wants to get loud, the rack is very loud. So um, we're just looking forward to the more games to come, more people. So, and uh, try to give them a show. And Rutgers pulls the giant upset at home. <laughs> Huge win for Steve Peichel and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Corey is another guy, you know, when I talk about improvements, you know, he certainly has made a tremendous amount. Also, he's a good student, first and foremost. Uh, he's a fun-loving kid. Like, I enjoy him. And he's learning how to be a really good basketball player. He practices hard now. He's talented. Um, you know, he wants to win. Big Ten level today. We talked about it at the top of the show that it was going to be critical for Rutgers to have a chance to pull an upset win against the top five team that he produced offensively. He certainly has done that. The other part of his game that needed to be in play was decision making. You could check that box as well. Corey, he is a good guy. Um, you know, been with Corey actually got me to come here. I remember him sending me a text message. Very energetic. He could jump out the gym every day. He knows what he wants and he just goes get it. Corey Sanders, maturity. You know, the reason I say that is because when he was a freshman, you know, he was like, you know, you know he was everywhere. <laughs> um, last year too, you know, he was kind of all over the place, but I, I, you can see that um, as a junior, you know, he's very mature. He matured his game, he matured his um, attitude off the court. You know, um, he has a goal, he has a dream that we all have, and that's to make it to the next level. And you know, you could just you could just see that. 15 to shoot. Corey Sanders trying to jumpstart his offensive Woo! game. Splits the two defenders and gets to the rim. Carrington a three on one. The lob taken away by Sanders. The drive got to the rim, and when he gets that close, it's money for Corey Sanders. Yeah. Again, the unselfish play by Sanders. Oh, Corey Sanders. We've seen that in his career. Now, you know, he's well on his way to achieving those goals. He's closer to graduating now. Um, he's improving in his basketball every day. I think his best days are ahead of him. Uh, and he's an exciting player right now, and I really enjoy coaching him. Sanders with the steal on the inbound finds Freeman for the bucket. Little finger roll, and don't look now. Rutgers back with it, too. Here he goes to work. Defender fell down in there, and Sanders gives Rutgers the lead with 59 seconds to play. You have to respect that quickness. He gets a guy like Copeland on skates. And uh, just being a scholar Knight is just, you know, dedicating yourself to working hard and to trying to win. Sanders attacks, throws it up. No. The putback. Sanders got it with one second left. Our future is looking pretty bright, so that's what we're trying to build on right now. Sanders on the drive. Oh, oh, and it's just a great feeling because I'm doing what I love to do. Thrown down by Corey Sanders. 
not a lot of people are gonna take care of you in your life. So right now, Rutgers University is taking care of us. So. Corey Sanders provides the highlight of the night. It's Corey Sanders, and you are watching the Rutgers basketball school. With a one-handed power jam. The Rutgers basketball story is brought to you by RWJ Barnabas Health, New Jersey's largest hospital system. Let's be healthy together. And Coca-Cola, taste the feeling. The Big Ten, the big stage. It's said so often, we rarely think about what it really means. And at Rutgers, a university which is located near the center of everything, it means even more. Here on the banks of the old Raritan, the big stage means golden opportunity. Countless options for young men and women and student athletes who are looking to build a foundation for a promising future. Off the court, there are countless and diverse opportunities for internships, networking, employment, and life after college. And on the court, the big stage borders on the largest media market in the country and includes one of the most passionate fan bases in the nation. BTN is on hand at the Rutgers Athletic Center. The rack is sold out today as Purdue is in town to take on the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Edwards going around some traffic. Freeman again with a rejection. We've seen this Rutgers team in this building play well against ranked opposition. And Rutgers jumps out on top to start this ball game. He's a chop. Almost 39% from behind the arc. Is he feeling it? Two blocks, then the little shimmy. That's a 4-0 advantage in blocks to the Scarlet Knights. So on campus at the rack, there's the opportunity to not only see some great basketball, but also to catch some of the best teams in America. And on this day, as Coach Steve Peichel and his Scarlet Knights took to the hardwood, it was for a ferocious battle against the number three team in the country in front of a capacity crowd that was thinking upset. It's by Sanders and a little showtime for Corey Sanders. You better put that through after all that fresh pastry. Sanders with eight, and Rutgers back within 10. Rebound underneath by Corson to put it back up and in. While the Boilermakers jumped out to an early lead, Coach Steve Peichel calmed his troops while keeping his own cool. On paper, Purdue toppled Rutgers in almost every category, but there are some things you can't measure on a stat sheet, and those are the things the head coach demands, the things the head coach is calling upon to help rebuild this program. Grit, effort, sacrifice, and heart. Rutgers won the battle on the boards, in the paint, and on second chance points. And the 15 point lead that Purdue built in the first half never increased. In fact, it continued to dwindle. Come on. Rebound kicked out to Bullock, and now numbers again as Sanders leaks out. Sanders against Matthias, the hoop, and the foul. Freeman knocks it away with a steal. Freeman to the rim. Three different Scarlet Knights posted double-digit scoring nights, with junior Corey Sanders leading the way with a season-high 31 points helped fuel in 11-2 run, which was capped by this dunk from Shaquille Dorson, in exclamation point on a stunning Rutgers comeback. High off the glass, oh, but Dorson flying in from nowhere to put it down. Where did that come from? Four points, three rebounds for Dorson. It's a one-point game. Oh, man. Twice in the second half, Rutgers came within a single point of tying a team on an 18-game winning streak. The explosion had everyone at the rack on their feet. They get past Harms. High off the window. No, the tip is there for Freeman. Effort plays all of them right now going toward Rutgers. 
And for those who came looking to check out one of the best teams in America, they were also treated to a pulsating Big Ten barn burner. Yes, Rutgers trailed by a wide margin early, but never surrendered and forced Purdue to use every ounce of strength and make almost every free throw down the stretch to survive against a team that was dogged all night long. From the foul line, good, it does count, but Purdue survives. 78-76, Purdue sneaks out a win on the road. At this point of the season, Coach Peichel's bench has become rather short. Two tough injuries to key players have hampered his ball club. Two players who might have been the missing pieces against Purdue. Two components that could have turned the tide against the third-ranked Boilermakers. Monday Night Hoops in Piscataway. Just 48 hours ago, this building hosted the Purdue Boilermakers. Tonight, it's another team from Indiana, the boys from Bloomington. That short bench was also on short rest, playing in a game two days later as the Scarlet Knights welcome the Indiana Hoosiers to the rack. Dadek has got to release it. How about that? Jake Dadek. After the game against the Hoosiers, Coach Peichel noted that his team didn't have the same energy it did two days earlier against Purdue. And there's the distribution. Sanders to Freeman. Despite double-digit efforts from Deshaun Freeman and Geo Baker, the Scarlet Knights just didn't have enough to defeat the Hoosiers. Still, there were some good moments, things to build on, and lessons to learn. Geo Baker, that's a little glimpse of the Rutgers future right there. So Coach Peichel needs to look ahead to the close of Big Ten play for another Rutgers victory. And with matchups on the horizon against Nebraska, Northwestern, Maryland, Ohio State, and Illinois, there are still plenty of fine opportunities for the Scarlet Knights. Rutgers fans, the Big Ten tournament at the Garden is rapidly approaching, and there are only two regular season home games left. Join Coach Peichel and the Scarlet Knights as they take on Northwestern and Illinois. The Rutgers women's team was home at the rack as they entertained the number 13 team in the nation, the Michigan Wolverines. The Scarlet Knights were looking to keep their impressive 12-1 home record going and grab a signature win on the Big Ten stage. Instead, Rutgers picks it off. Jazz Rollins to the hoop, lays it in. Jazz Rollins exploding to the basket. Jazlyn Rollins made some huge contributions early by showing her versatility, scoring and passing, and helping give the Scarlet Knights the lead in the first quarter. Tori Harris with a strong move, turned the corner around the defender. No, Jenkins offensive rebound scores. It feels like a postseason game. You get that vibe that both of these teams can sniff March basketball, and they know they, they both have to up their play, but Rutgers especially defensively playing like it's the postseason tonight. Fire. Beautiful move off the glass. Count the basket and the foul. Two seconds on the shot clock. Put up off the rim, rebound, Jenkins puts it up and in. Ethan throws it away, and Sanders gets it out to Carey, launches a three, yes, Stacia Carey. KK Sanders launches a three, yes. After Michigan tried to turn the table in the second quarter, the Knights went on a stunning 13-6 run. Wow, what a job by Gia Green to get that loose ball and score. That's a big basket, just from a psychological standpoint, if Rutgers can take a lead into halftime. Green steals, two on one, Scaife to Green, yes. Tyler Scaife, double teamed, 
Outside, a long three. It's good! CC Cryer at the buzzer. To take a 28-21 advantage at the break. And Rutgers had zero plans to slow the momentum after intermission. The second half started the same way the first half did. It was all Scarlet Knights, and there were multiple contributors. CC Cryer had a season high 17 points. Stacia Carey scored 12, and Caitlin Jenkins grabbed 10 rebounds. Anders dribbles in, goes around Munger, can't score, but then Harris cleans up with the offensive rebound. Michigan had 14 turnovers, and now another as it's stolen by Sanders, she scores. Yeah. Outside, Gia Green launches a three. Yes! You've got a lead, you're on your home floor, you need a win, you gotta find a way to close it out. Stacia Carey for three! Coach Stringer kept the team on the beam, and they never lost their pace or their focus. The Wolverines rallied with a run of their own to cut the lead to 48-47. But the Scarlet Knights never faltered and went on a 12-0 burst to shut down any thoughts of a meaningful Michigan comeback. Launches a three and banks it in. Oh, CC Cryer with a brilliant drive. Speaking of special right there, Cryer, 16 points for her today. Getting Rutgers to the finish line this afternoon. The Scarlet Knights continued their terrific play on their home court but more significantly, beat a top-ranked opponent for the first time since 2015. The team made a statement and proved they could play with anyone in the nation and now look to continue their winning ways in Columbus, Ohio, against the new 13th-ranked team, Ohio State. Always cracking jokes, um, always playing, having a good time. Fast. Uh, competitive. Fast. <laughs> Explosive. Smiling. Hi, I'm Jasmine Rollins. I'm a senior and I'm from Gainesville, Florida. I started playing ball when I was in eighth grade. I didn't know like what I wanted to do with it, but when I came to college, I realized it's something that, you know, I can continue doing throughout college, and I've just had fun with it ever since. Stan Rutgers picks it off. Jazz Rollins to the hoop, lays it in. Jazz Rollins exploding to the basket. Um, off the bench, I feel that I give a lot of energy. I feel that it's necessary because, you know, coming off the bench, you want to keep the same level of intensity as the starting five. Like, you don't want the intensity to drop. So always coming off the bench, I just think, you know, give everything I got every time I'm out on the floor. KK Sanders the steal, then Rollins lays it in. Jazz Rollins. We've seen Rollins do it all today. Rutgers is really a family-oriented environment, and it's just great to be here with the team that we have now. and. Coach Stringer and everything that she does for us, so it's great to be here. Rutgers has always been kind of like home. It's a family environment, and I respect Coach Stringer and everything she does, and I love this team. Jazz, Jazz, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, I was telling her that, I think it was in the Maryland game last year, that uh, she played very well. And I thought, well, Dad, where has this Jazz been all along? I couldn't figure it out. But uh, Jazz has it uh, within herself, and uh, it, it was interesting because her mom said that too. But Jazz wants to bring it when she wants to bring it. In other words, there are people um, that have to perform at a certain level all the time. I think that Jazz was shocked that I was saying to my point guards, I have as much confidence in her as I do the others. Because I do, she's, she's very talented, she's a great competitor, and uh, I'm glad that she's here.
Rutgers fans, there are only two Big Ten regular season games remaining at the rack. Join us as the Scarlet Knights take a nationally ranked Maryland and close out the campaign against Iowa. The Rutgers basketball story is brought to you by RWJ Barnabas Health, New Jersey's largest hospital system. Let's be healthy together. And Coca-Cola, taste the feeling. I'm Dr. Yvette Rooks, Chief Medical Officer for Robert Wood Johnson Barnabas Health Sports Medicine. Stress is a part of life, but it's how we manage our life will make us successful. So take the time to take a deep breath, to smile, to meditate, to exercise, and to eat healthy. Those will all help reduce your stress. My name is David Van Dyke. I'm the Assistant Athletic Director for Strength and Conditioning at Rutgers University. I work specifically with men's basketball. Having finished our first year, we, we, we have a full off season and the guys have a better understanding of what our expectations are of them and what the work level and the standards for their performance, whether it be in the weight room, on the court, in the classroom, all of those things have become established and guys have bought into that. So there's there's less teaching of those kind of minutia type things of, okay, this is when, this is, this is how the workout goes. This is how practice goes. You know, everything's there. there we, we've, we have created some routine to their, to their lives and it's making things run a lot smoother. So we're able to dive a little bit deeper into, you know, some of the different things that we do with them. So we are on our year two of working with the catapult system. Um, this year we've also added the Polar Team Pro. We can say, okay, this is how much work that was done and this was the physiological cost of that work. I'll sit down with Coach and he'll, he'll want to know like how much can we get out of the guys and I'll be very kind of general about it in terms of intensity and duration, how long we want to go and how hard we want to go. So we're able to predict where we want to be and really fine tune the periodization of how we practice and make sure that we're doing the right amount. We're training optimally, not maximally. The first hires I made here, uh, Coach Van Dyke was with me at Stony Brook University. I saw firsthand how he transformed the lives of, of, of the student athletes. You know, Coach Van Dyke is on top of all the technology, he's on top of all the nutrition. You can really see visually the, the job that he's done and continues to do, you know, with our players and, and it's exciting, uh, the ground that they've gained uh, and the improvements that they've made in just a short time.